Hey, today's the uh, 19th of March. Take a minute to read the minutes. I don't know if we have enough people, right? I don't think yeah. oh, Who all was no. here? I was in here. Cash and Jessica, oh, Yoli, Art, Gavin. Hmm. That's why you've only got two people that way here. So. Some of us will probably show up. Well, hopefully one of those. Don't we'll believe <clears throat> Who's that out there? Ken. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then we'll set aside the minutes for the time being. And uh, we need to set a date for the public hearing I gave you the for this referendum vote, which you all have a copy of. It's two of the selectmen's and, and then our uh, proposed zoning change. Now, because of the way... Uh, the cutoff date and when absentee ballots are due, the best date for us would be uh, October 30th. No, April. April 30th. It's a Thursday night. Nobody else is having meetings, not us and not the selectmen. And it's, it's within the time frame, but it's not after um, absentee ballots. May 10th is your cutoff date. That's when the absentee ballots are available. Oh, uh, she told me it was before that. Anyway. But that's 30 days. I'm, rec uh, I'm proposing April 30th for the public hearing. And we'll go over all. Now, because all zoning changes have to be proposed, or a public hearing has to be held by the uh, planning board, even if we didn't bring it forward, if it's a zoning change, we still have to run the public hearing. So because even though two of these are proposed by the selectmen, it's still going to be our public hearing. And we'll run it just like any other public hearing. So. Why couldn't we have it the 16th? Um, because it, it, may, it may it's too far. Uh, it has to be within 45 days. Oh, it has to be within oh, wait, 40, no, 30 days. See, I, I put the criteria on the back. Well, what's the 45-day thing? Um, I don't know. Well, that's what I... Hi, how are you? Yes. Well, I know that that's absentee ballots. It has to be within... Uh, screw it. I'm so... <laughs> The absentee ballots will be available, the 30 days is on a Sunday, so the absentee ballots will be available on the 8th. All right. Now, you got all this from Jennifer? Yes. She and I know about this, yeah. Well, why were we talking about the 30th, though? Jennifer and I were talking about the 30th. I think because that was the... Now, that I mean, that's still legal. You have to have it at least 30 days ahead of time. So that's more right. than 30 days. And I think it was because it was a Thursday that nobody else was meeting. Yeah, could be. So it still gives me time to do the notices that have to be done because you have to, it has to be in the paper seven days and 14 days. Right, right. <clears throat> and um, it has to be posted 14 days here at the town hall. And like, all right, if we didn't do it then, we could, uh, we could do it the 7th of May, but then we're getting closer to the end. And if we decide we want to have another informational public hearing, we can have as many of those as we want. This is the one official uh, cover all the bases public hearing. After that, or before that, we can have as many informational public hearings as we want. But the official one, I'm still shooting for the 30th. Chip, I get a question. Yes, um, Tom. Have the selectmen, is it our choice uh, as to when we schedule the selectmen's uh, item, or can that be done it's, it's, as well? No, it's, all, it's done all at the same time. Okay, good. So everything gets, it's one official public hearing with all three questions, and, uh, and then we go from there. And like I said, we can have as many more afterwards if we want. Does anyone have a problem with April 30th? I kind of like the idea of having a little bit sooner. That way, like if there was a big question that came up, that we had to research or something else, it could be a little bit more. 
maybe we should uh, <coughs> schedule an informational session like one of the night for RD meeting and we can do somehow that. advertise so that people we can, can do that on the 16th if you want and the second as well maybe just well, on the wait, that's, that's vacation week though and I'm not going to be here <laughs> The second might be a little bit too soon. Well, the vacation for an informational session, session, we could we could do that. Oh, we don't need the same notice, right? Oh, you might be right. It might be the week of the twentieth. Two, three. I'm trying to think. I think she's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. I'm still not going to be here, but <laughs> it's not vacation. <laughs> We're getting used to that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Yes, I'll be back for the 30th. All right, make a motion we have a public hearing on the 30th. Oh, you already made the motion, I second it. No, I was just suggesting that I just needed a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Can, 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 can I can just recap, please, for me, what is the decision on the Public hearing, uh, April 30th. The official one? The official one. Okay, have we set any dates for any others? No, because we haven't set this date yet. So, any other questions? Any other Comments, questions with this date. Yeah, well, why would you object to having two official public hearings where we could have the selectmen with us for more public? Oh, I'm sure they'll be there anyway. Right, but we could have, oh, for the informational session, do you think they'd sit in on the meeting as well? We're just calling it that. It'll still be a public hearing. And this is a public hearing, too. It's an informational right, public right. hearing. But, um, yeah, they'll be in anything we want to be at, especially if we're going to be going over their proposed ordinances. Yeah. Anything else? Well, uh, are we are we going to schedule after this discussion for the thirtieth any other meetings? Uh, we certainly yeah. can. Okay. Well, let's get through this one. Any other questions with this April thirtieth? All right. All those in favor, aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. All right, April 30th. Phew. Now, take a minute to read the minutes as long as time got here. Let's get that out of the way. Enactment of, of the zoning. 
and out of 15 requests that had been granted, there was zero that implicated <coughs> anything to do with the weapons. There were five that were that were questionable when we initially spoke with Jen, and uh, those five that we went into in some brief detail uh, were basically two of them were effective frontage uh, in the uh, Shoreland zone, a change to something uh, that was stated on the card. A third one was uh, adjusting the frontage, and then there was a, si a lot size adjustment, and then uh, one that was uh, held up because the building was not in complete when the assessor had visited the site. So their claim, or Ted's claim, made in the workshop, to my mind, is unfounded. The one where there's so many, we owe so much money that it would close down our entire budget. Well, <laughs> there, there were abatements granted, but none of them had anything to do with huh. the reason that we... So what prompted this again? Did, did anyone remind you what prompted this whole thing then? There's a lot of pieces of property that are affected by the last change in zoning. And when you say affected, what do you mean? Yeah. I mean, well, well wait, 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 they were wait. buildable at sure. one time. Can you can you step back? Where are you? Why are you taking on this case? Taking what case? I'm just saying she, she asked a question. I was just trying to answer it. Well, you, but you have now, no, now, wait a minute now. You, no you understand that you there's, no there's how many people here? Everybody has a different voice. We all don't. Yeah, I understand that. But you, you supported the the uh, planning board uh, proposal, did you not? Uh, which, you mean this? Yes. Sure. Okay. Do you think there's any merit to, given what we cleaned on Wednesday, uh, or sensibility in terms of resource planning to the uh, selectman's proposal? There might be if they have to do a revaluation of land that at one time was Buildable and now might not be. If they have to re if they have to revalue a lot of uh, lots in town and lower valuation on these lots, they have to raise valuation on other lots to to, to match the town's total valuation. And how would you? And it's, it, how would you give merit to that that premise? Would, didn't we just research that question? to the best of our ability and come up with uh, the notion that based upon three years of history, most proximate to the inception of the change, there was no no impact. Because you may not have people, a, a, a lot of people aware of it. If these, if these properties aren't being built on right now, if they're just, you know, uh, people just own them, and they haven't decided to build on them or use them yet, or they don't realize that maybe there are some things they can't do now that they thought they could. Somewhere down the road, that may they may come to the town and say, you know, hey, I thought I could use this piece of land for a garage, and, and it turns out I can't. So, and if there's enough properties, so if there's one or two properties. It may not be that big a deal. If there's enough properties affected and people start coming to the town seeking abatements, then um, seeking. if you have a lot of people looking for abatements and if it's legitimate, then you have to change the way you're valuing some pieces of land because something's wrong. Either, either the the process whereby um, the assessor takes into the value judgments made at the time of the uh, inquiry, um, either they hold some faith in the legal integrity of the uh, zoning, or else they, they maybe say, well, this guy has got some kind of a case and rather than rather than risk the town uh, liability, we're not going to we're not going to uh, uh, make this a test case. We're just going to 
resolve this and give the guy the baby. Um, I well, they see, usually do it on a case by case basis. I can yeah. see that would be a problem if that's time to occur. But I think, given that we've had three years of time and there were no challenges, zero, uh, to this inception of zoning, I, I think we ought to trust the good sense of the townspeople when they when they adopted this and just say. Fine. I, I've got no problem with what you're saying. I hope you're not saying that. Because these proposals are from a different group, they shouldn't be included in the referendum. They're here, they're going to be voted on, we're going to have a public hearing. There's no reason discussing it now and finding out who lines up on what side. Um, I do wish that it was done by petition, but to give it a little more merit, uh, because that, that's still a no idea. Anyway. Whereas the, the, the case that Ted was claiming existed, there's no evidence to show that thing. Well, when you have a buffer on your buffered wetland, right. are you taxed full price for it, or do you get a break? The, that is, I mean, that is what people want to know. <laughs> well, and that's not our purview, really. We, we did the homework that was necessary to answer some of the assessing questions surrounding the zoning when it was, when it was prior to its adoption. Well, you saw that. As far as I know, after this last zoning thing, I don't think they did a big revaluation of the town. They didn't. So, <clears throat> if people become aware that because of the zoning changes and the buffers and whatnot, pieces of their land are not usable anymore, they may start coming to the town. But to seek an abatement, you have, I think it's, well, 180 days, do you know Virginia? No, I don't. There's X amount of days after the, the, the tax has been, the town tax rate or whatever has been posted, August 15th or something, I don't know. You've got X amount of days after that to seek an abatement. If you seek an abatement after the time limit's up, you, can, you have no standing anymore. You have to wait for the next year for a new tax uh, being set and then seek your abatement. Um, if people start coming forward saying, hey, it out, I just found out I can't use my land, blah, 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 the town may have to do something to buy it. And if there's more than just a couple of lots, they may want to be proactive and revalue these properties in question. And if they did that, the, it would it would change around the valuation of, of the properties in town. They'd have to, if they're losing money here, they have to gain money somewhere else. So everybody gets affected. Some people can't use this piece of land, but he's paying less in taxes. Somebody else is going to have to make, pay more in taxes to make up what they've lost here. Um, Do you and, and I have no idea if anyone's going to be worried about this down the road. I have no idea if the town is going to be proactive and revalue a bunch of these properties or not. Or if they're going to wait for people to come in on a one-by-one -one basis. These are all things we can find out better at the public hearing from the selectmen. Because they're going to, they're going to try and run to come? Pardon me? They will come? Well, yeah, sure, because they've got two things on here. And they're they're um, they're going to try and figure out between now and then what the value what the change in valuations would be if either one of the, if any of these pass. So we'll we'll have we'll get some hard numbers and we'll and you've seen the map that Kenny drew and he boxed in all the ones all the properties that are affected now. So uh, you know we'll just. All these things will be answered at the public hearing. Do you do you think the the planning board measure has gone uh, in the direction of, of achieving a compromise when those issues are brought up? I, my my own sense is that we we've, we've struck a, a good middle path there and allowed this significant leeway for the applicant to do uh, whatever they would be able to 
do without infringing upon the, you know, value of what. Um, I, I would think it would be hard, they would be hard pressed to uh, validate the necessity of an abatement unless. Fine, the, we'll, we'll just have to see what happens. The, the other issue is that, um, you know, let the buyer beware. The, the town ought not to be uh, held out to dry every time somebody has to complain about their lot and, you know, zoning. You know, Restricts me here, restricts me there. The zoning is is for the public good. Um, it may cut one way or another uh, as to how it affects us as individuals. But the town adopts a zoning one. This would be an idea in mind that uh, uh, it does. You know, it may be injurious to some people, but it's beneficial on the whole for the public good. Uh, and that's why we have zoning. It's it's part of the plan. So we, we can't assure every uh, landowner that they can do willy-nilly whatever they want to do with their property. That's not, uh, that never was, nor hopefully shall be part of uh, town planning. I agree. Anything else, anybody? Where, where did um, what appears to be the first question come from? Uh, the first thing here? Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I don't remember. Maybe it was something that was discussed. The selectmen have two. Right. But they never referred to the one of them. So I have no, I, uh, I don't know. I, oh, I, they've always, there's always been two proposals. Right. So oh, the one that we did and the one that. No, no, they, they've had two and we've had one. There's always been there's three. two parts to the selectmen. Right. Yeah. yeah. The 4.2. Two four and four point two two six. Mm -hmm. Where where the planning board and the select one is the, the four point two two six. Right. Well, also the the four point two two whatever the first one encompasses all wetlands. That's wetlands. All mm -hmm. wetlands, even the stuff that's contiguous to the great ponds. Whereas we left the one, the large ones that the state had declared, we left them untouched. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and only did all the little ones. Well, we only looked at stuff outside of the shorelands. So right, that's what I was, that was I think that was translated. <laughs> one of the big differences. Yeah. They looked at all the RP. And we just looked at outside of shorelands. Yeah. And then they decided just to get rid of the other RP. Well, they propose point two, point two, to get rid of it. Anything else? Um, I'm just curious if, if anybody had time to digest that um, NRCM report that I shared with you guys last, uh, last meeting. Um, did you I'm sure hard got it. I didn't even see it. I wasn't here last week. Well, so. It might be in the phone. Um, Julia, uh, did you have a chance to glance at that? Yeah, it's been a while. Okay. Um, the reason I wanted to share that with you was because I think it kind of frames the issue that's facing us with these zoning proposals um, in the sense that it kind of ups the ante of, of our work because if you have the time to digest that um, document, you'll see that the um, backing of the DEP in at the state level has um, uh, been greatly diminished in, in terms of their ability to be uh, an effective public advocate and work with municipalities for lake protection programs. The budgets for many of the programs that they had in, the, in place that we used to avail ourselves of have been largely removed, removed or curtailed to the point of ineffectiveness. Um, Ineffective or reduced effectiveness? Well, if I'll let you, I won't make the judgment. I, I, I just hope that you all have a chance to read it because I think it kind of ups the ante on our. Our role as, as citizens to protect our, our resources because we don't have the help that we previously had from a state agency that was kind of critical in the process. 
All right, anything else? Yeah, I just, how could we uh, schedule like an informative session for our crew? It would be the 16th. Is something we can put on the website just to let people know? Yep. Could you do that? Uh, could you get some notices out of your informational meeting on proposed zoning changes to the uh, zoning ordinance for the 16th of April? So you have one the 16th, and the official one is the right. 30th. Yeah, yeah. In fact, if you could give me uh, just like four copies, I got this. Is that right? Um, yeah, just an uh, informational meeting on proposed zoning changes. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Here, the 16th of April. Mm -hmm. All right, terrific. Anything else? Yeah, just, just to piggyback a little bit on what Todd was saying about the zoning. A few weeks ago, Gavin, we were talking about the schoolhouse and, and Tom Gore's uh, exception. And Gavin asked me what I thought. And at that point, I didn't really know what I thought. But we, Setbacks are a lot the same as what Tom's talking about. Setbacks are how we protect resources, public safety, how we keep people from intruding any more than needs to be on each other. And the zoning is, is somewhat the same same line of thinking. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, if anybody wanted to find more information out about that report, they could they could go online to nrcn.org and um, uh, look for lake report entitled Troubled Waters. Okay. Has this been uh, put on the planning board website? No. Well, I just got it. Did you put, put our one proposal on there? No. I didn't. Okay. I didn't because I wasn't sure if we should put one and not all three, but I got it today. So we can put all three on there? Sure. Well, the select them. I was going to say eight. They probably have, well, there's we probably have a copy of the referendum on the website. I'm not sure that there is yet because I think it was just signed. Oh. But the reason our page is, what, three or four deep, if they put it on the main page when you click in, there it is. I think would be more beneficial, but I'm not sure what they plan to do. Oh, you mean the town website as opposed to the planning board website? Right. Yeah. We're, we're, we're just a tab on the right. website. So. Well, either way, I mean, it's just a, if we can get it out there so people have it, you know, in their head as long before the hearing as possible. Uh, well, if, if we don't have it there, I'm sure that uh, you can find if out from Jennifer. Them, yeah, right. One of us will. And if it's, on, if it's on the town's one, it'll come up faster. Exactly. Then hunt through ours and throw crap out of the way to get at it. Right. I mean, they would have to go up and pick the tab and then pick the... Uh, right, right. It's three clicks till we get to us where if it's on the main page, it's the one. And then the hearing will be right on the main page. And now that we have... It's on the cable. A hearing so, date. Yeah, so this could be right with the hearing posted it will. on the... Okay. Right. All right. So yeah, she'll do that as soon, as soon as they know that we've officially picked a date. These questions are going to referendum, all three of them? Apparently, yeah. And the referendum is going to be? On the voting day, whatever it is, mm -hmm. on the night. On the night. Yeah. Right. And then town meeting. You might not have to read them. <laughs> Pardon me? Well, that's why it's the hope town meeting is that there'll be enough people at the public hearing that if they have questions, they can, you know. It's because absentee ballots will be available 30 days later. But they want a referendum because they want more people involved. And zoning changes used to be have to be a town. Well, apparently it is town meeting. We always thought it meant the sit down town meeting at you know on the Saturday. But town meeting starts on the ninth when they gavel it open and pick a moderator, and they start voting. That's when town meeting starts. And the lawyer has told them that that's all you need 
to vote changes to zoning ordinances. So in the past, we thought it had to be, you know, the physical sit down, stand up, blah, blah. And it just is when town meeting is open, that's when it starts. So they can legally do this with referendum votes. And then you get, you get more people to vote. Whether they know what they're voting on, that's another question, but that's not my problem. We're going to try and alleviate that the third time. Well, we'll do what we can do, you know. You going to reserve upstairs? For the 30th? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, we don't want all us in the selectmen in this lower room, do we? So what's the public hearing is going to be on all three questions? Yes. Yes, because the planning board has to hold the official public hearing for any zoning change, well, yeah. regardless of who proposes them, unless it comes by petition later on, you know, after the dates that we could do anything, you know. But, uh... Good night, everybody! Good night, Cable Man!